I've been getting a lot of questions lately, some very important questions that I'm hoping to try to answer today. Uh, questions such as, hey Paul, you remember that build you did in the Fractal Meshify 2 with the 3900X and the RTX 3080? Uh, what was the performance like on that system? Or how about that small form factor build that you did in the uh, Evolve Shift 2 for your buddy Chad? Uh, what was the performance like on that one? I also got hit up by MSI who was like, hey Paul, you remember that uh, RTX 3090 that we loaned you? Uh, aren't loaners usually returned? Can we get that back at some point? And then going back to that Meshify 2 build, a lot of you guys have followed up and been like, hey, you also mentioned giving this system away. Uh, what's the deal with that? So my goal today is to answer those questions as best I can. Unfortunately, I've already been experiencing some setbacks, which I'll get to in just a second. But if there is a most important takeaway from this video, it's gonna be the super secret message that I'm saving for the end. Excellent. Corsair has new cases. The 4000 series presents a solid mix of looks, functionality, and affordability for new and veteran PC builders alike. A spacious interior and the rapid route cable management guides make for easy assembly with room for up to 620 millimeter or 440 millimeter fans. The 4000D Airflow features an optimized airflow focused front panel while the IQ 4000 X sports sexy tempered glass panels and is RGB ready with the included lighting node core. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. I actually started working on this video yesterday with a fairly simple set of goals. I wanted to set up those two PCs that I recently built so I could get a little bit of testing done with them. And I wanted to reassemble the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio cards that I used for the RTX 3090 SLI overclocking videos that I did about a month and a half ago and check those out if you're interested. Those cards are still in the same state as they were when I stopped that project, which is to say that the uh, coolers are removed. They have CPU blocks that are hacked onto them for cooling. They have tubing coming off of them that's wrapped up with paper towels. They're enclosed in sort of a, a cardboard sarcophagus in order to direct airflow over them. So if I've been putting off reassembling those cards, it's because I knew it was going to be a fair amount of work. Uh, but back to that in just a second. What I first wanted to do was just sit down and start setting up the two builds that I had done. And that's where I encountered my major issue with the system that I just built for my friend Chad, which is that there is no video out, which is one of the most frustrating things that can happen with a new PC build because it's very difficult to determine what's causing the problem. My first thought was what if the CPU isn't being recognized? because even though we're using a uh, B550 motherboard and the B550i Aorus Pro AX, there are older BIOS versions on that motherboard that do not support the 5000 series. You need a GSA code 1080 to get them recognized, and you need a GSA code 1100 or newer in order to get the performance out of the CPUs. Most of the time it's impossible to update a BIOS without being able to see anything on screen, but in recent years there's been a feature on motherboards, and this is one that I called out in my motherboards video talking about my favorite motherboard features, which allows you to update the UE EFI BIOS without a CPU or memory installed. And it's intended for motherboards that were manufactured at a time when new CPUs hadn't launched and you need to update that motherboard even though you don't have a CPU that's functional to slot into it. Gigabyte's implementation of this is called QFlash Plus and it's accessed by a button, a physical button on the back of the IO shield. Unfortunately, Gigabyte's documentation of that feature is really lacking right now. So I have to give a huge shout out to Mike's unboxings, reviews, and how to's because he has a really well done tutorial on using Gigabyte QFlash plus, including details on how it will respond and the way the little LED uh, flashes on the back and everything. So he indicated that you actually need to not have a CPU or memory installed. I did it by just removing the memory and it seemed to function okay, at least with the LED flashing. It was going nice and slow. It took a while and then it rebooted. Unfortunately though, that did not solve the problem and I still am not getting video out out of the system. At the same time, I was able to get Windows installed and up and running and get the system set up for the Meshify 2 build. So I should at the very least be able to show you guys some performance results from that system. But for right now, we're shifting from a testing video to a troubleshooting video as I attempt to get Chad's new PC up and running. And I think there are some definite things that might be causing the issue with the video out. One of them is that the riser cable that ships with the Shift 2 is actually PCIe 3.0. So it's going to limit the bandwidth just a little bit, which shouldn't really have too much of an effect on the graphics card's performance. However, if the motherboard is stuck in PCIe 4.0 mode, then that might be causing an issue with the video out. There is of course a slight chance that the graphics card is not functioning anymore. I did disassemble it and take the cooler off and I reassembled it when I put the build back together. The card was otherwise functional and there wasn't anything major that uh, leaped out to me that seemed to indicate like, oh, maybe there's something wrong with it. But I think I am gonna start by swapping the graphics card out and go with one that I know works and see if that forces the motherboard back into PCIe 3.0 mode. That's also kind of a lowest hanging fruit troubleshooting method because the steps after that involve removing the motherboard and undoing a lot of the work I did when I assembled this system, which I would prefer not to do, but you know, we got to get it functioning somehow. So I'm going to start tinkering with that. But before that, I did get some work done yesterday and uh, trying to sort of check off the items on my list today. Uh, let's start by reassembling those RTX 3090s. 
So there they are, looking nice and pretty, no worse for the wear as far as I can tell. I should probably plug these in and make sure that they are functional. But another reason why I wanted to do this is the uh, 6900 XT is launching very soon and I am anticipating doing some testing for that. I of course cannot confirm or deny the existence of said graphics card or anything like that at this point, but uh, the comparison GPU for the 6900 XT is obviously going to be the RTX 3090. And since this is my only RTX 3090, it helps to have it in a functional state and not in a state that requires me to connect it up to a water cooling loop. And honestly, these air coolers did a really good job when I was doing the first phase of the uh, SLI testing. Also, I can't confirm this, but MSI said they were gonna give away the other one. And I'm not sure if they're still planning on doing that, but I will return this to them post haste. And uh, well, if they do, I'll let you guys know. is obviously the best way to install a graphics card. Let's uh, give it a shot though. Ew. Look, it still works even though it's hanging off at an awkward angle. Well, what do you know? All right, I guess it was a 3.0, 4.0 thing. I hope, I, oh wait, I saw that. Oh, oh yeah, the SSD I used already had a Windows install on it. That's, that's convenient. But hey, that's, uh, that's very positive. So now that I have a video out signal, I can go ahead and get back into the UEFI. I also get to see if my blind BIOS flash actually worked. Uh, it did, look at that, F11K, so cool. The 5600X is recognized and we need to go and uh, set this to PCIe 3.0. So I'm just gonna do two things in here. One is going to be enable our XMP memory profile, of course, and the other over here in settings under miscellaneous, we have PCIe slot configuration and we want that to be Gen 3. We're now ready for a test with the RTX 3080. Look how responsible I'm being now that I've encountered some issues with this build. I'm doing an outside of the box test, but here goes. I also realized that uh, there's not a whole lot of lighting in this side of the system, so you can't really see the graphics card very well through the mesh side panel. So I was seeing if I could grab an LED strip to integrate here as well, but it doesn't seem to be working properly. But hey, there's some really good news. We have a video out with our RTX 3080, so I think I can reinstall this and I'll, I'll figure out the LED situation. Maybe I'll do something. I did manage to scrounge up an LED strip that was functional. Uh, to put in here, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys. I think I'm gonna pull it out. I don't think it looks that great. The LEDs are standing out too much and it's not really lighting the card very well either. So anyway, just, just something I thought I would attempt. What I should have done is asked Fantex for some of their LED strips that they have. They have this sort of layer over the top that diffuses everything that might look a little bit nicer, but I don't think this is really necessary. Yeah, I'm okay with it like this. Well, this makes me happy. Windows is now installing on the system so I can get it set up. This is what I was intending to start the day with yesterday, but you know, setbacks happen. Fortunately, we were able to work through that and get the system up and running. So testing, I wanted to test these systems and uh, if it's not already evident, I am a little bit shorter on time than I was expecting to be. So I think I still have a set of tests that will give a pretty reasonable idea of the performance of these two systems, but I had to get them set up first. So a few notes on that. Chad's system I am delivering soon. So I spent more time getting this set up because I want to deliver it to him and then not have him bug me about things afterwards. So a few things I did was set up a fan profile. And the nice thing again about this Gigabyte motherboard is that you have fan stop mode option for the fans that are connected to the motherboard. So although it's a little bit warmer right now, so the fans are spinning, since the power supply has a zero fan mode, 
and the graphics card has a zero fan mode, and I set the case fans down here and up here to not spin at all when the CPU is at a low enough temperature, and uh, even the fan on the CPU will turn off if the CPU is at a low enough temperature. The only thing that will keep running is the pump up here, and that, even at low RPMs, is super, super quiet. So when the system is not in use, when it's just at idle, not only is it gonna be super quiet, but since those fans aren't spinning, it means a lot less dust is going to build up on them over time. I also wanted to keep things quiet, so I went a little bit more aggressively towards uh, keeping them silent, so these fans are running at lower RPMs overall, so keep that in mind. Beyond that, the CPU is running at stock with PBO and auto OC enabled. The memory is plugged in with its XMP values, so it's running at DDR4 3600CL18. And I, of course, got Windows 10 installed and updated. I'm running the latest GeForce drivers. I downloaded the latest AMD drivers uh, for the B550 chipset, and I'm running in high performance mode and the Windows power settings. For setting up the other system, which I'm just going to call the giveaway system, not to have a spoiler out there or anything, but I remembered that I have DDR4 3000 speed memory, and I wanted to over clock it, and again, I had a really limited amount of time for doing that. I managed to get it running at DDR4 3400, again at cast latency 18, so the same cast latency as the memory in this system. And all the other setup was the same across the board. Now, if you're just running gaming uh, tests, then you're gonna find that with the same graphics card, like an RTX 3080, and the same CPU, you're gonna see minimal variance between those. It's gonna depend on the system temperatures and the slight changes in frequency between the CPU and the GPU. That said though, let's look at my initial test results and my apologies, but I just wrote them down on my notepad. So I know this is super official and I hope you can read my writing, but uh, we're testing Doom Eternal and Cinebench R20 for our gaming and our CPU tests. Doom Eternal is a game that Chad actually intends to play, so that's part of the reason I chose it, also a game that I have. And these are my numbers with the 3080 Founders Edition when it comes to average FPS at 1080 and 4K, 387.5 and 164.2. And this is sort of an ideal scenario. These numbers were taken from my benchmark tests that I ran. The giveaway PC, even with a slightly slower memory setup, uh, is running at a higher frame rate, and I believe that is because of the frequency that the GPU is at since it is the ASUS Tough OC model. But you can see we're getting a couple more FPS going from 387 to 389 at 1080 and at 4K we're also jumping from 164.2 to 169.8. Both of those systems are running the 5900X though so when it comes to Chad's PC with half the cores and threads we're seeing a bit of a drop off but not too bad at all from uh, 387.5 down to 372.9 and from 164.2 down to 162.8. So really negligible in terms of FPS lost. Even at 1080 where there's a little bit more of a load on the CPU. When it comes to our Cinebench scores though, we got single thread and we got multi-thread. Here again, I do have my original numbers from my original testing, so 5600X got 603 and 4662 for single thread and multi-thread. We matched that single core score of 603, but uh, we did score a little bit less on the multi-thread score. We were hitting 4.64 gigahertz peak, but it was dipping down below that. So I think this is just the CPU cooler being a little bit more limited with a 120 millimeter cooler on there. With this test, I was using an NZXT Kraken X62, which has a 280 millimeter radiator. So that allowed the temperatures to stay just a little bit less and allowed the frequency to hit 4.64 gigahertz across all cores in the entire test. But just those dips I was seeing and Chad's system down to 4.5 or 4.4 uh, caused the overall score to be a little bit less. Meanwhile, the giveaway PC again hit the same single thread score of 633, but again dipped down on the multi-thread score not a whole lot, but just by about uh, 600 or 630 points. We were hitting good uh, overall frequencies at 4.825 to 4.85 peak. But again, I'd attribute that uh, drop off in overall score to the memory configuration because this setup here is running DDR4 3600 memory with cast latency 16 timings, whereas this setup is running DDR4 3400 memory at cast latency 18. So some quick hit relative performance there for the uh, CPU and the graphics card. But of course, the biggest thing you're gonna be concerned about with an overall system and comparing different systems together is going to be uh, how loud they are and how hot they are. So next up, I'm gonna run a stress test for 10 minutes and show you guys uh, thermals and noise from that. And then I'm going to do a bit more standard gaming tests and I'll show you the results for that as well. Before I get into that though, one last thing I wanted to point out is the AIO situation right here. And with the video I already posted on this build, a lot of people were like, Oh my gosh, Gamers Nexus is gonna be mad at you because the uh, pump and block is above the radiator. And while I would agree that this is not ideal, I don't think it's bad at all for one. I've already been testing it and I can't hear any noise or anything like that. Hopefully that doesn't develop over time, of course. Second, the worst case scenario is having the block actually oriented like that way to where it's actually upside down. That is a big, big no-no, but we're not encountering that here. And then lastly, I did position the tubes at the top of the unit right here. So hopefully if there are air bubbles that develop over time, they're gonna be sitting at the top of the block and not actually cycling through it and maybe even collecting a little bit in this upper tube. But again, with initial testing, and hopefully this will be represented as I do some noise testing here in a second, uh, this setup 
is really, really quiet, especially with the way I tune the fans. All right, so I've been gaming for 10 minutes, just uh, normal gaming with Doom Eternal here. So let's double check our numbers. Peak frequency is still 4.641. It uh, looks like on average we're around 3.7, 3.6. CPU temperature on average is looking quite nice between 46 and 49. So that's, uh, that's quite reasonable during gaming here. This is gonna be more of a load on the GPU than the CPU. And there's our graphics card temperature, average of 64 and a peak of 70. And here's a quick noise test. This system does make a little bit of noise. You can hear the fans, but they're very quiet overall, especially considering that I'm standing right next to them with just some mesh there. And you might be able to hear Hero more than you can the fans. And here it is about the same distance on the GPU side. I'm definitely happy with the gaming performance of this system and the noise levels that it's achieving in the performance. Let's do one last stress test though. All right, our less practical stress test has been going on. We've been looping times by Extreme as well as the Ida stress test in the background. That's been going for over 10 minutes now. And here's our results. Average CPU frequency is about 4.4 gigahertz, which is, uh, which is good. That's about where I would expect it to be. It seems to be maintaining that. It's bouncing between 2.25 and 4.5, you can see there. CPU temperatures, meanwhile, are understandably a bit toastier since we are doing a stress test on the CPU. We are averaging about 73 degrees on that uh, main die. Peak, we have hit 80 degrees Celsius on the CCD1 and uh, 73 and 75 respectively on the other sensors. So again, in a stress test environment with 120 millimeter uh, AIO, I think this, uh, these are pretty good results. And meanwhile, our GPU again is staying nice and cool, averaging 53 degrees Celsius, uh, peak of 71. Although it is getting a little bit of a break in between as the 3D Mark tests load. And here's a quick sound test with the double stress test running. And graphics card side yet again. At this point, I have completely run out of time, unfortunately, so I'm going to need to leave the stress test on the giveaway PC for a later date. But I do get to deliver Chad's new PC today, so we're gonna go meet him up right now. All right, I'm here at a secret disclosed, undisclosed location, and uh, there's my good friend Chad. I've known him ever since junior high, and he was the best man in my wedding, and uh, he's, he's tolerable, I guess. <laughs> Let's first do a reveal here and get this out of the box so you can take a look. Just heard something rattle. Maybe we could figure out where that rattle's coming from. I'm sure it wasn't important, it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this isn't important. You know, it's, it's a, we'll just let it go. All right, why don't you just power it on? That's, that's, all, that's all we want here. Chad's powering on his new system. The big one. Aha. But this video has gone on way too long already. So uh, Chad, I hope you enjoy the new computer. Uh, we, we really like your shirt too. And to end this video, the secret special announcement that I sort of alluded to, but didn't tell you guys what it was and maybe you figured it out, but uh, go down in the video description. I am launching the giveaway for that uh, super epic 2200 ish dollar PC with the 5900X and the RTX 3080 and the Fractal Meshify 2. The giveaway is gonna be open for a couple weeks. It's intended to overlap with our charity live stream, which is on December 12th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, do that at Paul Hardware and I'll be tweeting about when that event starts. If you guys can join us, it's gonna be lots of fun. We're gonna play games and drink some brews and we're gonna be raising money for extra life. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. And uh, links to all the stuff I built with are down in the description. We'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.